Okay. At, Atlanta had a history of, uh, of, of so-called very good relations between African-American leaders and white leaders in, in the uh, city. A city that promoted itself as too busy to hate was a city in which there was a very strong stratification uh, and a very strong group of black leaders. Any of the ministers at Wheat Street or um, Ebenezer, um, um, let's see, Bethel, any of those leaders were the top leaders, uh, not just uh, uh, religious leaders, they were also civic leaders, uh, and they were, very, they were very important. They had a, the presidents of the colleges, Rufus Clement, for example, so a significant leader, Benjamin Mays, a significant leader in the city. When we started the city's movement, it started a, a stratific it started a friction between people who were used to making decisions and students who had the brashness to suggest that they were going to make decisions, and that was a collision. But it wasn't just the leaders, the college presidents, and I can remember President Raleigh coming to me, very concerned about the impact of our student, of our citizens on donors. So there, were, there, there was uh, 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 Dean McFeeters would come to me several times about the impact on donors, but there were some other people who, uh, who uh, were guiding us. And I would say one of the most significant from that period uh, was Carl Holman. Carl Holman was, a, was an English professor uh, at Clark, but he was the one who suggested that we start our own newspaper, and he started the Atlanta Enquirer uh, from that period to offset the opposition that we were also getting from the Atlanta Daily World. That's, this is, this is uh, we've revised history now, but there were people who, uh, who were a part of, uh, of the existing order who were not. Give me a All the little technical things, so we're yeah. going to pick up from um, the Atlanta Enquirer and yeah. go on from there. Okay, so just give me a second. What do you need? Oh, I make sure that. That's the good one. I don't, I don't think people rec realized or recognized or gave Carl Holman the acknowledgement. Carl Holman was a very, very, I don't know if you know him. Did you know him? Did you know him? Carl, and he later went on to become a head of the Urban Coalition. He died early, but he was a very significant figure. Then I think that there were people over at Spelman, like Staunton Lynn and Howard Zinn, uh, over at Spelman, radical uh, white professors over there who were, who were very supportive of what we were doing. A number of the professors at the schools, whether at Morehouse uh, uh, or at Clark, uh, Holman was at Clark, but there were professors at each of the schools who identified with and, lent and gave guidance uh, to what we were doing. Now, it's interesting also what was happening. Here we were in 1960, starting the sit-ins, which essentially transformed uh, the social order in Atlanta, in Georgia, in the South, ultimately the nation. Much of our politics in 2015 has its roots in what happened in, two, in uh, 1960, the divisions in the parties. When I was a kid growing up in Griffin, Georgia, the only Republicans were black. This, the the uh, leaders of the, of the Republican Party in Spalding County were all black. Come to 2015, the only Republicans uh, in Griffin, Georgia are white. Uh, so that the whole, we grew up in a period that they call the Solid South the solid South being solidly democratic. That all changed largely because of the sit-ins and the student movement. The whole politics, the whole, uh, the whole realization of people like Ronald Reagan that here was a, it was an opportunity for them to take advantage of the changes that we had brought about in the South. So that they, the politics of the country, the divisions, the racial polarization, the racial playing that Republicans adopted was to pull white voters from the Democrats and pull them into uh, the uh, Republican Party. And they have largely succeeded on that, and with consequences that I don't think are good for the Republican Party, that are good for us. But that's another thing. We didn't see this then. 
We had no idea that this was going to happen, but that is a consequence of the changes that occurred. Now, uh, one of the reasons that happened was when Martin Luther King went to jail and uh, Mr. Kennedy got him out of jail, I am told that Daddy King said, I've been a Republican all my life, and I never thought I'd vote for a Catholic, but I think I can now. And that was the beginning of, of, of changing that. Is, is that, that was a, that's, that's, that's very clear. In fact, when I was in the Peace Corps uh, in Ethiopia, my, 1963, 1965, when I was in the Peace Corps, my Peace Corps director was a guy by the name of Harris Walford. Harris Walford uh, became a senator uh, from uh, Pennsylvania, but Harris Walford was Jack Kennedy's civil rights advisor and told President Kennedy to call uh, Coretta uh, and, and to express his uh, concern about her husband uh, being in jail. That action, in fact, did have and may have been the pivotal moment in the whole campaign to, ch to shift Daddy King but not just Daddy King, that P President Kennedy would be bold enough to shift in very key states uh, the, uh, the uh, black vote. Uh, and it, it happened around. I don't think, I think there was a lot of concern as to whether a Catholic could be a Catholic and a president. And I think that uh, that concern, which was, you know, this is 1960, we had never had a Catholic that, for, that, uh, that high in office. And so you had a kind of uh, an attitude that the Pope was gonna be making policy you know, that, 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 uh, that, was, uh, that was misguided, uh, but some of our significant leaders, and among them, uh, Daddy King, uh, felt that way. Uh, I was about to say, though, that when we started the sit-ins, we still had a, 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 a different set of, uh, uh, of social order. At, uh, I dated at Spelman. So you go over to Spelman on a Sunday, and you would have your date, and that would be in the, it would be in the, in the, in the large lounge uh, there, and that would be a chaperone sitting in the, in the lounge with you, and you had to leave at six o'clock. Uh, now, this is at the same time that we are tra transforming the social order, but the campus order ne never really changed. We still had to, uh, we still had to, we wanted to have a date, we had to go over there, and the, and the week, the, the time was very limited. You could go over there at eight o'clock. You, you could leave, you had to leave by nine o'clock or something like that on Sunday. You could go in the afternoon starting at about four o'clock. So things like that, the, the colleges still had very, very uh, uh, antiquated uh, attitudes about how you, uh, how you lived on the campus. But then at the same time, we were out you know, uh, creating a, a whole new social order. Now, your relations with African governments actually brought you back to the United States, but the roots of those interactions are with the Atlanta student movement. The, the roots of it were, were, were with the student movements. I, I saw, after I came back from uh, Kenya in 1962, I saw, when I was assessing what I wanted to do, when I looked at, when I looked at Julian, for example, Julian was really very, very incredibly agile and very, very uh, 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 swift on his feet. And at a, at a, at a, we were the same age. He was two months older than me. Uh, but Julian was very good. He, he never had journalism training, but he was very good at, in, in, in television. And I could, I, could see, uh, I could see then, in 1960, the potential for somebody who would eventually do something like Eyes on the Prize or things like that. I could, I could see the others of our Marion Wright Edelman, Herschel Chalinor, uh, Jim Felder, uh, Ben Brown, any of these people, as, as I looked at who, who was, and then to the other people who came in. Uh, when uh, Jesse Jackson was over at A&T uh, when they started, but when he came in and, and SNCC was formed, you had a whole, a much larger uh, collection of African American student leaders who began to interact with each other. SNCC was a good uh, opportunity for students to interact with each other and compare notes and create a leadership class that basically was the leadership class for the next 40 or 50 years uh, in the whole country. It, it, it fanned out, it created strategies. Now as I looked at this, it was a very important kind of insight that I had. When I looked at myself and I compared myself to Julian, to, to Lonnie, uh, to Ben Brown, uh, to Herschel, 
to uh, Marion Wright Edelman.